Domain and Range of Circular Functions. We will devote two sets of videos for the topic on domain and range of circular functions. One set is for sine, cosine, and tangent functions. And another set for second, cosecant, and cotangent functions. Before we go into the domain and range of sine, cosine, and tangent, let us go back to how we defined your circular functions. So let t be a real number. For any real number t, there is a corresponding arc in our unit circle whose length is also t. And that arc has an endpoint. Let's call it point p. So what are the circular functions? Sine of t is y. Cosine of t is x, tangent of t is y over x, x is not equal to 0, cosecant of t is 1 over y, y is not equal to 0, second of t is 1 over x, and cotangent of t is equal to x over y, y is not 0. Let us look into our rectangular coordinate system and uh, discover the domain and range of sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So again, how did we define your sine function? Given a real number t, there is a corresponding arc in our unit circle whose length is t, and that arc has an endpoint, which we call p. What is sine of t? Sine of t is the y-coordinate of that point. What is cosine of t? Cosine of t is the x-coordinate of that point, And tangent of t is y over x. So what is the domain of sine of t? What is the set of admissible values for t when we are looking for sine of t? Well, we have no restrictions for t when we are looking for sine of t because you're always going to have a value for the y-coordinate of your point. So the domain of sine of t is the set of real numbers. It's the same for cosine of t. For any length t, there is always a corresponding point p, and that point p is always going to have an x-coordinate. The domain of cosine of t is also the set of real numbers. How about the range? Okay, so look at the range. The range is the value of sine of t. Okay, so starting from when t is 0, sine of t is 0. Look at that, 0. As we rotate our arc counterclockwise, the value of the y-coordinate, that's our sine of t, it increases up to 1. After pi over 2, okay, so that is pi over 2. So after pi over 2, the value of our sine of t, again, pay attention to the y-coordinate. It decreases. It continues to decrease. And the minimum value of the y-coordinate is negative 1. So when we are about to reach 2 pi, the value of our y, the y-coordinate, returns to 0. So what then is the range of sine of t? So the range of sine of t is... Because sine of t is the y-coordinate of our point, this means sine of t is greater than or equal to negative 1. That's the minimum value of sine of t. And, okay, so the largest value of sine of t is 1. So sine of t is less than or equal to 1. It's the same with cosine of t. Look at this. Our cosine of t is the x-coordinate of our point. When our arc is 0, the value of cosine of t, the x-coordinate, is 1. And the minimum value of the x-coordinate, so pay attention to it, is negative 1. After pi, cosine of t increases again and it returns to 1 again. The range of cosine of t is... Cosine of t is greater than or equal to negative 1 and, and less than or equal to positive 1. Let f of t be sine of t. 
this is a temporary notation because later on when we go to graphing, we will go back to this notation y is equal to sine of x. The domain of sine of t is any real number or the domain is the set of real numbers. The range is, this is the range. This is the resulting value for or, or resulting values for sine of t. Sine of t is greater than or equal to negative 1 but less than or equal to 1. You can never have a value of sine of t that is greater than 1 or less than negative 1. All of those values would have to be contained in the interval negative 1, okay, this is 0, to 1. How about cosine? So for cosine function, the domain is any real number or the domain is the set of real numbers and the resulting values of your cosine is this. Cosine of t is greater than or equal to negative 1 and it is less than or equal to 1. 